So it's 2024 and I regularly go back every single year and take a look at what my tech stack is, the tools that I use pretty much on every project that I create. This is no exception. So today we're gonna to go through all the tools that I'm using, a couple that I'm testing out to see if they make it into my tech stack, and also tell you why I've chosen various different tools and why I use different services. So first of all, let's start off with InstaWP. Now I've already covered InstaWP in multiple videos, this just means that I can spin up a WordPress site to test things out in seconds. But I've also this year started using this one when I'm working on client projects or when I'm working on my own projects to test things out, easily be able to kind of handle version controls and so on. It makes my life incredibly easy. It's something that within a couple of months of actually buying this, it became an everyday use tool. So it just basically allows you to spin up WordPress, create multiple different setups, templates. You start a sort of sites with any kind of plugin that you want to install with it. You've got a plugin that actually goes into Chrome that allows you to view any plugin you can see in the WordPress repository or any theme. Hit one button, it will spin up a site for you with that plugin or theme already installed and activated just makes my life so much simpler and easier. I'll put a link in the description to the videos that I've created on InstaWP. You can check it out for yourself and see what it offers. You kind of get a better idea then if it's any good for you. Next up, the main tool that I'm using right now for building my websites is Bricks Builder. Now, before anybody says anything, I do still use Generate Press and Generate Blocks. I tend to use that for simpler projects that don't require all of the functionality that something like Bricks Builder brings to the table. So I'm not stop using it, I carry on using it, it just depends on the project. But my main builder right now is definitely Bricks Builder. Why? Because it has pretty much everything that I need inside there. If I wanna work with dynamic data, I wanna work with more advanced features like repeater regions, flexible content fields, I wanna use nested loops to create more detailed and feature-rich loops in my designs, I can do it all inside Bricks Builder. I wanna use a class-first approach to designing things so my entire work process becomes a lot quicker, I can use Bricks to do that. So Bricks Build is definitely the way forward for me. And again, I've created a ton of videos and I have an interview, the only interview that Thomas from Bricks Build has actually done on a live stream with me a couple of weeks back. And I'll link to all that information, the playlist and everything else in the details below. So you can check that out and get a feel for it yourself if you don't know what Bricks is all about. Now, while Bricks is an absolute powerhouse, there is still room for improvement, especially when it comes to the interface, handling things like all of the CSS classes you may create, opening things up to visual ways to create and build grids, all these kinds of things, and way, way, way more are available using Advanced Thema. This is one of those tools that once you install this and you start to customize the look and feel of uh, Bricks to your own way of working, when you go back to a plain old vanilla version of Bricks, you kind of wonder where everything is and how did you cope so long without all these options. Is it something you need? Absolutely not. Is it something I would recommend? Absolutely. I get no money for this. I get no money for Bricks. These are just tools that I've bought, paid for, use myself in every day, and I just want to let you know about them. So do check out Advanced Thema. It is absolutely amazing what Maxim is actually doing with this plugin. On top of that, I use Core Framework as my CSS framework of choice. Why a CSS framework when you can do most of this inside Bricks for yourself? Speed. You can deploy this, you can have things up and running, you can have so much control over everything, or you can just go with the vanilla setup using the Core Framework, pair that with the Bricks plugin to connect the two together, which again, you don't need. You could use Core Framework for free, create your framework inside there, add in what you want, remove what you don't want, create a nice, simple, streamlined CSS file, and then upload that directly into Bricks and start using it. If you want that added functionality of simply right-clicking and choosing from a range of different predefined CSS classes that are part of Core Framework, then that just gives you that little bit of extra functionality. But you can use this alongside Advanced Thema, and you can get a lot of the functionality that the Bricks plugin gives you inside Advanced Thema combining it with, with Core Framework. But for me, like I say, this is my framework of choice when it comes to working with Bricks Builder. Now, another tool that has become absolutely indispensable to me is Happy Files Pro. Now, I bought Happy Files on Lifetime Deal probably five years ago, and this is from the same developer as uh, Bricks itself. So they work in conjunction with each other to get an even nicer workflow. But what this allows me to do is not only just manage my media, which it is great at, creating folders and tagging things, all these kinds of things, 
but it also allows me to do the same kind of thing with my posts, my pages, templates, and so on. So if you have a site that has a lot of content on there, this is a great way and to be able to organize everything from your media right the way through to your posts, your pages, and so on. I use this extensively on the learnbricksbuilder.com website because it allows me to organize all my content in a much easier fashion. And this has become part of my Blueprint site. So I have all this set up. I can easily manage all my files, all my pages, all my posts, my templates and everything, all from inside Happy Files. Wicked little plugin and super useful. Now, when it comes to SEO, I know there's a lot of tools out there like Rank Math and so on, but I've been an SEO Press user for probably the best part of five years. Again, I pay for this myself. I don't have anything from them for free and I continue to pay for this every single year. SEO Press, the free version, has a lot of options available. So if you don't have the budget, I would recommend taking a look at SEO Press. Free, it should cover all of the key bases that you need, but if you want that extra little bit, the pro version does open up some additional options that are useful, but I don't think they're needed for every single project. So you could probably get away with a free version for an awful lot of use cases. One of those little features inside SEO Press that saves my bacon on numerous occasions is the ability to automatically create redirects if you rename a page or you delete a page or a post or anything like that. It just makes the whole process of moving, deleting content and not worrying about all of those links being dead links because you can handle it via SEO Press to deal with all those redirects should you need them and forget to do it manually. Again, like I say, tons more features, but that's one of those cool little useful time savers for me. It's WordPress and WordPress means lots of updates. And we know that when it comes to WordPress, an update to any plugin, core, all those kinds of different things can easily break your site. There's so many moving parts in a typical WordPress website that it is very easy to have some incompatibility and your site goes offline. So for me, WP Vivid Backup and Migration Plugin is a go-to. Now you can use the free version for a lot of use cases for handling just automated backups that you could run alongside your server. And I would always recommend having multiple use cases for this. So you can have on-site backups on your hosting, off-site backups to some kind of cloud platform using something like WP Vivid Backup Pro, you just have redundancy built in. The other thing that I really like about this and why I've gone the pro version, again, I, I bought this myself, I bought the lifetime deal for this a couple of years back, use it on every single site for myself, my clients, is the ability you've got the rollback. Now there's been a bit of sort of concern over this and they took it away a little while back and they brought it back and then they made some changes to it. So it's been a little bit of a to and fro hoo-ha with this, but it's back in here now. And what it basically allows you to do is whenever you update the core WordPress, a file for your sort of theme or anything to do with your plugins. This will take incremental backups that if something goes wrong, you can roll it back and it's not a complete entire site rollback. It's just rolling back the plugin or plugins that could have caused the issue. Just gives you peace of mind alongside other backup solutions. So like I say, this is something I use on all of my sites. So whenever there's an update, I can hit that update knowing that if something goes wrong, I've got a backup there in place that I can roll back very quickly. And should the worst happen, because none of these things are totally infallible, I've also got a daily backup on my server as well. So I've got multiple different redundancy options in place. But that's WP Vivid Backup and Migration, the pro version. But like I say, the free version has tons of options, including having automated backups running daily, weekly, whatever you kind of want to set up. So if you want the free version, has a lot of bases to cover. Now, speaking of lifetime deals, I was lucky enough to pick up ACF or Advanced Custom Fields Pro several years ago on the lifetime deal. And this is now part of what I install on pretty much every single site. It's part of my blueprint. And I may as well use the pro version because, well, I've got it. I've got the lifetime deal on it. And I've got those extra functions should I need them in any project, whether it's at the beginning of the project or six months, 12 months, two years down the line. There may come a time where I need to use some of the advanced features in pro and it's easier than having to remove the other plugin and put the Pro version in there. It's all reinstalled, activated, and good to go. But if you don't know what ACF Pro is, well, let's be honest about it. Just go onto my channel, and there's tons of videos on how to use advanced custom fields, free and pro, showing you how to use this with Elementor, with Bricks, with all manner of different tools to really expand what you can do with WordPress. If you don't use ACF or ACF Pro, you really need to look into this because it will open a world of possibilities, even simple things like where you create your templates and you've got repeating information like business details, opening hours, phone numbers, emails, and so on. Use ACF Pro, create an options page, put those details in there, and they're accessible then throughout all of your options pages, all your templates, and so on. And you can just simply use that information from there, and then you update it in one place, and everywhere referencing it will change and update accordingly when you make that change. 
it's just a, a no-brainer time saver. And that's just a simple example of what you can do. There's so many more options as part of ACF and ACF Pro. Next up, if I find any of the sites I'm developing need a little bit of a boost when it comes to optimizing them, Perfmat is his way I go to. I'll run Perfmat on there, configure things, and just eke out a little bit more performance should I need it. Bricks is already pretty optimized for speed, but there's always room for improvement with anything, and this is the tool that I would recommend taking a look at. It's relatively easy. I would say if you want to find out what all the different functions inside you do, just go online, do a search for the admin bar, and you'll find that Kyle has done two different interviews with the main developer behind Perf Matters, and they've gone through every single setting and explaining what each one of them does so you'll understand what they do, and then you can make an informed decision on how to configure things for your specific instance. But if you want to eke out a little bit more performance, check out Perf Matters. It's definitely a pretty sweet tool. Now, I dropped Google Analytics several years ago, and in its place, I've been looking for what I consider to be a tool that gives me the information that I need. Because let's be honest about it, for a big percentage of users, Google Analytics is daunting, overwhelming, and offers way too much information for what most people actually want. We want to find out how many people are coming, how many visits, what they're doing when they're on there, where the traffic's coming from, top pages, those kinds of things. This is where independent analytics opens up all those options. And I use the free version on all of my sites. And this just gives me all the data that I need to run and make effective decisions. Does it give you everything you've got inside at Google Analytics? Absolutely not. Do you want to have options for tracking kind of marketing campaigns? If you do, using UTM parameters and so on, then the pro version of independent analytics will open those options up to you and a bunch of other options as well. So if you want to go further and you want to see what options are available inside the pro version, check that out. But you can have things like real-time analytics, campaign links, WooCommerce analytics, email reports, PDF reports are coming as well soon. So if you want to send out reports to your clients, if you're using this on their websites, that's a pro feature. But there's so many features available inside the free version and this 100% GDPR compliant. Check out independent analytics for yourself. Now, I've been using Solid Security for WordPress for quite some time, even though it's only actually renamed itself quite recently. Before that, it was iTheme Security. Before that, it was, I think it was better WordPress Security, something like that anyway. But it's always been reliable in my experience, touch wood. So if you're looking for an option to handle things like two-factor authentication, hardening the security of your WordPress website, and a bunch of other things that don't overwhelm you with a bunch of techno babble, take a look at Solid WP. There is a pro version, I don't use it. But if you want the extra features, check out that, the pricing and so on. But I've found in most use cases, the free version does more than enough, and it should be more than enough to get you up and running, securing your website, covering most of those issues, if not all those issues, that people encounter when it comes to security on their WordPress websites. Now, speaking of security, out-of-date plugins and plugins that have vulnerabilities is something that we all need to be aware of. But in the reality of it is, we don't have time to go and check all these things out and monitor things. This is where Patch Stack, one of the new features that I've added into my tech stack, has come into play. What this does is it will monitor and notify you if any of your sites that you have connected to Patch Stack have any plugins that are vulnerable. It will notify you, tells you if there's an update available, what version or versions were compromised, all those kinds of good things. It gives you an additional level of peace of mind. And if you go for solid security and you go for the paid version, you can actually have this. It will connect up to patch that you don't need to pay for this as a separate service. However, if you don't want to use that and you just want to use patch stack alone, I would recommend taking a look at it. Like I say, I've started using this on all of my sites, commercial and personal projects. Gives me peace of mind, notifies me if there's any vulnerabilities and I can handle those with knowledge, speed, and making sure that everything is updated accordingly. Now, these next three tools are tools that I'm testing out to find out if I want to take these and use these inside my tech stack to replace some other tools that I'm already using. The first one is Flowmatic. Now, I've covered Flowmatic a couple of times. I'm not going to go into too much details about what it is, but if you want to have automation as part of your website, connecting WordPress, for example, to your CRM, maybe to your email marketing platform, to your accounts platform, all those kinds of things, Flowmatic allows you to do that. What this does is it sits inside WordPress. So this isn't an external service, it's part of WordPress. It's a plugin for it, and it allows you to connect all these things up and run different automations. It has a lot of really cool things inside there. Version 4 has literally just been released. And if you are looking for a tool that allows you to be able to connect WordPress with multiple different other services, this is what I would recommend you take a look at. 
check out Flowmatic. Like I say, I've released videos covering this in the past. So if you want to check those out, just do a search on the channel. And there's a couple of videos there to kind of go into a bit more detail than what I want to in this video. Now, next up is Fluent Forms. Now, I've had Fluent Forms for a little while, and I've tested the free version out, but I'm also testing out the pro version now. I'm still experimenting with how this works, and the reason I'm talking about Fluent Forms and maybe not some of the other form plugins are out there is because it ties in nicely to one of the other tools that I'm looking at also testing out, which I'll come on to in a moment. But Fluent Forms has a lot of options available in it. There's over 400,000 businesses using it worldwide, and it's got a pretty decent reputation when it comes to what you can do with it. There's a free version and there's a pro version. The free version should cover most use spaces for more simple forms, but if you want to get into things more complex, and more advanced, then you're going to need to take a look at Fluent Forms Pro. Now, there's things I quite like about this is the drag and drop form builder, so it's a nice, easy, visual way of working. So, taking a look at some of the older plugins, they weren't necessarily this nice to work with. But you've got ready input fields, there's a bunch of options for pre built templates. You kind of get the idea. It's a form plugin, but it's a powerful form plugin. And if you've got a need for those more advanced forms, take a look at Fluent Forms. It might be a useful option for you. But going back to the reason why I'm taking a look at Fluent Forms Pro right now is because I want to see how it will integrate into Fluent CRM. I'm testing it out for the email marketing side of things to see if this can take away from my MailerLite subscription and maybe even from InCharge, which is what I use for my main email marketing side of things. Again, there's a synergistic link between all of the Fluent products. So it means that if I use Fluent Forms and maybe Fluent Snippets and Fluent uh, SMTP, and Fluent CRM, then they all kind of talk to each other in a nice way and it kind of has, they should all work together really smoothly. So I say, these are not in my tech stack right now. These are ones that I'm testing out to see if they'll replace other services and things that I'm paying for and give me a little bit more flexibility and more control over these different things. Anyway, that's my current tech stack. But what are you using? Do you use any of the same tools that I'm using? If you do, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you enjoy this kind of video, make sure to hit subscribe to be notified when more content is released on the channel. As always, all applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.